thanks for joining me for another lesson. This one is going to be covering the Eric Clapton solo from the song Strange Brew by Cream and the Albert King solo from Crosscut Saw on his Born Under a Bad Sign album, which is supposed to be the solo that Clapton copied, was influenced by for, for the Cream solo. So come in for a close up and uh, let's do it. So we're going to look at the Eric Clapton one first. It's essentially it's a 12 bar blues in A. The Albert King solo from Crosscut Saw is um, it's 24 bars, so it's twice as long. We're only going to do the first 12 for that one. And also the Albert King one is in A flat. So we're bringing it up to, to A, so it's the same. And obviously that matches the backing track at the beginning, which incidentally um, I'll post as a separate video so you can practice over it. Which, called Sank Along the Lines of Strange Brew back in track in A or something original like that. Um, but yeah, it's just a, it's just a 12 bar blues, so it's... Four bars of A at the beginning, and then your standard pattern, and it finishes on the A as well, as opposed to going to the E for a turnaround. So that's the rhythm we're going to be playing over. It's all a minor pentatonic. Uh, it's a really good minor pentatonic song for learning your scales because it covers, I think, four, four out of the five positions. Um, doesn't really deviate from the minor pentatonic, with possibly the exception of uh, adding a major third at one point. And yeah, well, it's a classic solo. Uh, that's that's why Clapton was influenced by it or copied it, if you like. Um, that's the way the blues works. People are influenced and copied other people. It's not really, it's not like ripping off a song. It's not like a copyright issue. It's just the way it is. I think Clapton was quite honest about it. I think he also said it came from Buddy Guy, but I think I think originally he said it came from Albert King. So who knows? Anyway, so the Eric Clapton one starts off in the fourth position, and this is the first lick. So, so what we've got there is we've got start with the A note, 14 on the G string, then 13 on the B, and then we're going to bend up the 15 on the B a tone and a half. And then mute it. Second lick. So 14 on the G again. Two tone bends this time on the 15 B string. Don't sound them as they come down. Sorry, that was wrong. I should say it's very hot in here and my fingers are sweaty and slippery. So. Uh, Excuse any errors. Anyway, so 14, two bends on the 15. Quickly play the 13 on the B string twice. And then 14 on the G. Bit of vibrato and then a little micro bend. And mute on the 13 B string. So that second lick is. Third lick. So what we're doing there, we're going straight to the 15 on the B string for a bend. Hold it for a bit, play it again without bending it. And then play the 13. So bend, mute, play the 15 again. 13 on the B, play the 14 twice on the G, vibrato, and then again play the 13 on the B, but this time slide down. So all together we've got so far. And then the 
the fourth lick is definitely a classic Albert King style lick. <laughs> So we're sliding up from the 7 to the 9 on the G, and then we're playing 8 on the B, 8 on the E, but try not to sound them all at the same time like I just did there, so we want them separated as much as possible. And then we're going to pull off 10 to 8 on the B, and then we're going to slide 9 to 7 on the G. But so fast you're not really hearing that nine at all. And then we're going to micro bend a little like quarter curl on the uh, fifth fret of the G string. And then we're going to play seventh fret twice on the D string. And then we do this thing where we are adding an additional note from the minor pentatonic. So what we're doing there is we're sliding up from either the 5th or the 4th fret on the G string to the 6th fret. And then we're going to jump down to the high E string on the 5th fret. And then we're going to play the 8th fret on the B string with some vibrato. Sorry, slippery fingers. And then slide up a little bit at the end. So from the beginning. And then to finish we've got this. doing there we're going 14 on the G, 13 on the B, 15 on the B. Then we're going to bend six times up almost a tone with our first finger the 13th fret on the B string. So six of those. And then 13, 15, 13, 15, 13 on the B string, 14 on the G string. So last time I'm hitting the 13 there, a little micro bend there as well. And then to finish with the first position lick. So that's five on the E string, eight and then five on the B, seven and then five on the G, on that five another little micro bend, and then seven on the D, followed by seven on the A. You could roll your ring finger to the two sevens. I find it easier to bring my middle finger over to hit that A string. So Eric Clapton's slow solo slow down in total is this. Now for a Mr. King solo. So it starts off very similar, there's just an additional note and he's not bending up a tone and a half, he's just doing a tone. So it's... So 14, 13 again. This time we played a 15 once without bending it, and then we bend it. And then dead it, mute it. And then the second lick starts off with bending the 15 on the B string twice. So it's 
So two bends on a 15, 13 on a B, played a 14 twice, so you got to get that time and it's not too, it's not, it's plays the 12 which is different to Strange Brew on the uh, G string. I'll slide it down a bit. Then he plays a big bend on the 15. Which is a slight delay before it starts on this third lick compared to Strange Brew. So hold, 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 sound it as it comes down and go straight to the 14 on the G. G string. Bit of vibrato. So that bit's quite different. So we're using a third position lick there. So what we're doing is we're bending the 13 on the B string up a tone. And then we're playing it not bent. So bend, mute, play again. Then play 10 on the B string, and then go back to the 13 and do two micro bends, and then 10 again. So, vibrato. And then he's double stopping on the 8th fret on the uh, B and E, and then sliding down. So, that third lick in total is. Well, I'll do it from the start, so. Wait. And then to finish with, we're going to go, basically it's similar to the sixth bend in Strange Brew Solo. But this time we're going to play it more Albert King style down here. So Albert King was um, left hand. I've had to do this video a few times, so I might be repeating this on this version. I'm not sure, but um, <laughs> so apologies if I am. But he was left handed. He played a right handed guitar upside down. So he did a lot of bending on the high E string, which other people don't necessarily do. Sometimes you might pick an easier position. So Clapton bends this note here, whereas Albert King bends it down here but using his first finger, which is quite tricky. But though he did also, I think, have fairly low drop tuning, so who knows, could have been easier. Anyway, so the way we're gonna do this bit is, so 10 on the B, eight on the E, 10 on the E, and then rather than trying to bend, do the bends on with our first finger, we're gonna use our ring finger. So we're gonna come down, so. And another difference is rather than six like fairly evenly timed bends, this time we're gonna do five bends, which kind of varied in their timing. So it's gonna sound like this. So what we're doing there, we're doing two straight tone bends. Then we're doing a third one, which lasts a little bit longer. And then a fourth one, which lasts the longer out of all of the bends. And also goes slightly over pitch. And then we finish with a fifth bend, which is just a normal one again. So rather than the six, we've got this. And then it finishes us with which is eight on the E string, five on the E string, five on the B string. And then repeat that, but finish with eight on the B string instead of five, so. And then back to the root note, which is the fifth fret on the E string. So all together that last bit. And then it finishes very similar to Strange Brew with 
So I'm sliding from 10 to 8 on the B string, then I'm playing 5 on the B string, 7 5 on the G, that micro bend again on the 5th fret. Finish with that same two last notes as Strange Brew, which is seven, seven. And that's it. So let's do the Albert King one slowly for one last time. That's it, that's it, Strange Brew, Crosscut Saw. You can see how one's influenced the other, you can see the similarities, but you can also see the differences. And if, if you're in a, an environment where you've got to improvise a blues solo, then you can just use that, and then you can adjust it to the Albert King one, or vice versa. Um, yeah, apologies for any mistakes, like I said, it's very hot in here, but um, yeah, hopefully I'll make a few more of these. If anyone's got any suggestions or uh, something you'd like me to learn, then that's cool. Let me know. If not, no worries. Hopefully see you next time. Take care. Bye.